London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with wood and clay, wood and clay, wood and clay. Build it up with wood and clay, my fair lady. Wood and clay will wash away, wash away, wash away. Wood and clay will wash away, my fair lady. Build it up with bricks and mortar, bricks and mortar, bricks and mortar. Build it up with bricks and mortar, my fair lady. Let's fix that bridge. Clap your hands. Bricks and mortar will not stay, will not stay, will not stay. Bricks and mortar will not stay, my fair lady. Build it up with iron and steel, iron and steel, iron and steel. Build it up with iron and steel, my fair lady. Iron and steel will bend and bow, bend and bow, bend and bow. Falling down, my fair lady. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Day. Okay, what's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? We begin with the continued destruction of the Princess Juliana International Airport. Why I say that is because over the weekend, um, the season just started, and there are flights that are booked out from now until next year. And with the Christmas season coming up, you can imagine the amount of tourists that are coming to St. Martin. Now, the minister of uh, the acting minister of Tiat Omar Otley, minister of everything, um, said a couple of weeks ago that he expects a great season um, with numbers peaking as high prior to COVID-19. That's about two years ago. So this is a good thing because people are traveling. People want to see St. Martin. But of course, the state of the airport continues to be a big issue. Now, um, Savage Chris last week made a chilling discovery that the report that um, had to do with the excuse, the reason why it's delayed again for the next couple of months, we had already know since 2017, three months after the hurricane to be exact. Uh, because an uh, independent contractor, an uh, uh, outside company, came in, did an assessment, we paid them for it, and they gave us this report. Apparently, nobody bothered to read the report, or the good people at the, the airport management decided to just come up with a bunch of same problems that we know we had, in the recent press release that come, came out from the airport. So, of course, um, suspended member of parliament made a topic of it, um, Claudius Boncampo, on Monday, and this is what he said. You know, the airport is something I have been very, very critical about from my days in parliament, and when I go back again, I will be critical again. Because when you look at the airport, one must wonder why at this stage in the ball game, we now talk about delays because paint peeling off the steel structure at the airport. In 2017, a report of all of these things was written. I read the report. I saw the report and I read it. And this report wasn't written by Johnny under the tree. It was written by competent people on behalf of the airport, Marco and all of them. Now, five years later, 
five years later, 2022, we come up with this new plan. Seven month delay because paint peeling off the steel structures and we have to put a fire retardant paint because it's so important to have this done. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, six million dollars more. You see, people, my thing is this. If this report didn't exist, I would have just boldly stated that when the airport was inspected, it wasn't done the right way. But the import, it was inspected the right way. The report exists. One of the people that know of this report was Michael Hyman. The man who was in charge those days put back on the roof of the airport. Why do I say Michael Hyman? That's the one you fired. That's the one you said didn't know what he was doing and was doing all the things wrong. You know who doing things wrong? You all. Because this whole painting is a hoax. Somebody enriching themselves with six million dollars and there will be no investigation because it's all a bunch of white Dutch people and who don't like what I say I don't really care anymore I've reached a stage that I'm going to expose where it needs to be exposed Balas Nadam messed up in Skip Hall Skip Hall is brought down here to handle the reconstruction because they know how to do, deal with these big projects. Balas Nadam is given the contract when it didn't deserve the contract. There was a better bidder. But they were Chinese. So, suddenly now we slip in Balas Nadam. What are the consequences now? Tourists are standing in the hot sun outside of the building, wrap around the building, like a merry-go-round. Oh yeah, where that merry-go-round be, Brian? The one that you took to give concessions. Where that one be? Put that one up outside and people could go for a free little spin. And then, you hear them talk about seven months and six million dollars. And when, when Christopher broke this story last week, Tuesday, I think it was, oh, Everybody went crazy. Cancel press conference. Fellas flying back from Aruba. Heads going to roll. Your damn right heads going to roll. You all's heads got to roll now. And a full investigation should be started. A full investigation. And we don't need the TBO. We got to launch the Sersha. Our own boys. They should be the ones looking at it down there. Because anytime those white boys get involved, things start to disappear and get covered up. And I talk another experience. I could tell you how that does work. So please, we need to understand what's happening down there. A whole design and repair was paid for. Can you all recall about a year ago, Mingo's story in Parliament? How they had this form in America. And I think it was the same Emmanuel had asked, start asking questions about designing forms and this and that, and how much millions are going here and there. And today, today, you come and talk about paint being stripped off and the redesign. But, but what the hell was going on? Somebody, let, let me keep those things for myself because I can put myself in problems. I'll tell you one thing. The press, the press release, from Ballast Nadam in the airport, it was a bunch of hogwash. It was a load of hogwash. It was a cover-up for their incompetence and bagging $6 million. That's what it was. No more, no less. It is absurd that the World Bank and the government sit by and allow this stupidity to happen. Because that's what it is. They are sitting by and allowing this to happen. Because the World Bank put money in there. So how come they ain't opening them out? The government is the shareholder. How come they ain't opening them out? Everybody just standing by. 
So either everybody else wrong and a few right, or the population is waking up, realizing what's happening, starting to complain, and everybody's scrambling. Because most probably, they're going to have to recuse themselves again. Only God knows what reason going to be this time. So in other words, um, it basically means that uh, Mr. Brian Mingo still is the worst CEO in St. Martin history. Still, still the worst. I just don't understand. And the thing is, the silence of the government is what scares me in this situation. We didn't have a press briefing last week, so we weren't able to ask the ministers their opinion on the situation. The last time I did ask, they said, yes, they are aware of the different um, time situation and the amount of tourists coming. Meanwhile, tourists are lining up outside of the building trying to get into St. Martin. They don't have enough space. So, of course, people are standing for hours outside. And this is how we say, welcome to St. Martin, the friendly island. Friendly, my ass. But in any case, um, the opposition members, I should say the majority of the opposition, decided to call a urgent meeting of parliament. Um, hopefully, it's going to be convened soon. Um, and it has to do with the airport. Of course, I know for sure some serious cutters coming for <laughs> the minister of um, everything, and that's the acting minister of Tiat, Omar Otley, because he would have to sit there and basically get lamb blasted by the entire opposition for doing um, a horrible job when it comes to the Princess Juliana International Airport. Of course, um, it's unfair to blame the minister of everything, but when you're the minister of everything, then you have to take... Um, blame for everything. So the meeting is supposed to be called in the next two days. Let's see if, it, uh, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's called at all. And then we'll get to see what the opposition will come up with. Maybe they might put a motion of no confidence for no apparent reason against not the minister of everything, but against the prime minister, Severa Jacobs, for our inability to handle the situation at the airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know who I feel bad for, though? The workers. The workers at the airport having to deal with this incompetent management. That's the sad part about this whole situation. Um, all right. Um, over the weekend also, St. Martin's Day was celebrated in grand style. Of course, um, all the dignitaries were singing Kumbaya on the French side of the island. Uh, it was French side um, turn to host. So um, in French Quarter, you had the Minister um, of General Affairs, Prime Minister Sylvia Jacobs, and of course, the President of the Collectivity, Louis, Const uh, Louis uh, Mussington. I always mess up, mess up the names. Louis Constant Fleming, Louis Mussington. Louis Mussington, sorry. Um, anyway, they signed an agreement um, basically making the unity flag a cultural symbol, whatever that means. Now, over the weekend, though, I did notice a bunch of people have no idea what the flag is, what it represents, and what does it mean. Uh, many people who are involved in the daily operations of government, they kind of understand, or they read the paper, or they watch you know, television, or they watch Facebook, so they get a little idea, but many people who just worry about themselves have no idea. You know, a woman stopped me the other day and she was like, is that, is that St. Martin's new flag? And I was like, um, <clears throat> no, it's a unity flag. She was like, okay, unity of what? She's like, you know, unity, St. Martin, St. Martin, we won. She was like, wait, isn't one the Dutch side, the next one friend side? So yes, but it's, uh, we, unity. She was like, okay, but, what does it mean? Do, do we have to salute when we see it now? Like, no, it's more like a cultural mm, expression. Yeah. Anyway, um, the prime minister gave an explanation prior to signing the Memorandum of Understanding in French Quarter over the weekend. Take a look. The Memorandum of Understanding between the country St. Martin and the Collectivité of St. Martin on the St. Martin unity flag. 
The country St. Martin, represented by Prime Minister Silveria Jacobs and the Collectivité of St. Martin, repre represented by President Louis Mussington, having considered the sovereignty of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the French Republic over St. Martin and St. Martin, respectively, Consider that despite this political separation, the two local communities have and continue to live in peace and harmony, cemented by strong social and family ties, and by the virtue of the general principles fixed by the Treaty of Concordia signed on March 23rd, 1648. Consider that these ties have led to the development of shared cultural practices, traditions, and symbols that resonate deeply with and form part of the identity of the people on both sides of the island. Recognize the value of deepening and expanding upon this shared cultural history under the theme of unity, an impetus for experimentation innovation and development have decided to use the St. Martin unity flag as a joint cultural symbol of the affirmation of the unity and identity of the people of our island. The St. Martin unity flag bears no political or institutional value and is therefore to be used only on occasions of cultural value to the people of St. Martin. It is therefore not a national flag and is to use, and its use is not regulated by flag protocol. It is therefore not to be used in a manner that is equal to the regulated national flags. On a side note, until we change that. Signed on the unifying occasion of St. Martin Day, Friday, November 11th, 2022, at, in a few minutes, and for St. Martin, I will sign Silveria Jacobs, Prime Minister, as well as Dr. Anders Rudolph Samuel as Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports, and for St. Martin, President Louis Mussington, and Madame Dominique Democrit Louisi, third vice president in charge of human development. And we now go over to signing. Yeah, I know, you're still confused, but that's okay. Um, it's our unity flag, go read up on it. That's, that's the best I have. Welcome to the late night show, we have a good one for you. Um, let's begin. 